Good evening, beloved. Good evening. Welcome to worship here at St. Martin's Lutheran Church. It's good to be with you tonight as we continue our conversation on the whole armor of God and the shield of faith. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and glad it. As we come together, friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Let us begin this evening with our gathering song, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Okay. Merciful God, hear the prayers of those who cry to you and shine with the light of your presence on those who live in the shadow of death. May we rejoice in your saving help and sing you songs of praise in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading this evening comes from Psalm 13. I invite you to read the bolded verses. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. You my eyes. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. But I trusted in your steadfast love. I will sing to the Lord. Tonight, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Our sermon text this evening comes from the letter to the Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith he still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of this same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful, who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, and they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace be to you. From God, our Creator, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, there is a quote that I have come across a number of times, and I have no idea where it originated, but I have to tell you that every time I see it, it speaks to me. It says, courage is knowing it might hurt and doing it anyway. Stupidity is the same, and that's why life is hard. <laughs> I wish whoever came up with that had told me before I found myself standing on the edge of a 40-foot cliff in International Falls, Minnesota. The church I was serving as youth director had been taking summer houseboat trips to that little cove for 20 years. And for just as long, the youth of that church had been flinging themselves off the cliff into the cool, clear waters below. In all that time, no one had been seriously injured. And now they wanted their new youth director to try it too. 
They tried to tell me it was fun. They tried to tell me it was safe. They had all sorts of arguments it would make me cool. But the one that got me up there was Derek did it. Derek was my predecessor, and we can't let Derek be cooler than me. So there I stood, hyping myself up to jump off a cliff. One of my youth very helpfully told me to make sure you jump out, not straight down, or you'll hit the rocks. I took a running start, pushed off the edge, and plummeted into the water 40 feet below. When I climbed into the boat, I'm not sure if I knew yet whether I had been brave or stupid. But I did know I wasn't jumping off that cliff again. Courage is not is knowing it might hurt and doing it anyway. Stupidity is the same, and that is why life is hard. I have to wonder if there is a similar dynamic between faith and foolishness. The author to the, of the letter to the Hebrews says, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And so faith is about having confidence in the face of a lack of evidence and still taking the chance. And I think a great many people would say that foolishness looks the same. Because taking a risk based on a gut feeling instead of facts and figures seems like a really good way to lose. As we continue talking about the whole armor of God each week, we've been asking some questions. What is truth? What is righteousness? What is peace? Tonight we ask, what is faith? And that first verse of our reading is a great place to start. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. It's almost like the writer knew I was going to want to say more about faith. Because he goes on to talk about the faith of Abel and Enoch, Noah and Abraham. Their faith brings them righteousness as they pursue God's heart. And if we were to continue reading, the author would also lift up Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Rahab, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and so many more unnamed women and men who walked by faith in pursuit of a vision of what God was doing in the world. Through faith, these saints conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured. Others suffered mocking and flogging, even chains and imprisonment. The writer says of all these saints, the world was not worthy. But not one of them achieved the perfection they were striving for. This great cloud of witnesses kept seeking God's heart, kept working for God's will, kept striving for that vision of the repair of the world. And so we keep striving today. What is faith? On Sunday, I shared what Martin Luther said. That faith is a living, daring confidence in God's grace so sure and certain that a man could stake his life on it a thousand times. I also shared St. Augustine's definition. Faith is to believe what you do not see. The reward of this faith is to see what you believe. Like the words of the writer to the Hebrews, these are a good place to start. But my favorite definition of faith has always been what Dr. King had to say. Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Abraham had no idea where his journeys would take him when he answered God's call. Moses couldn't possibly have known what lay ahead of him when he kicked off his sandals and stepped closer to a burning bush. 
Peter couldn't predict where walking on water would lead him. Mary had no idea what the future would hold when she ran back to tell the disciples, I have seen the Lord. None of us sees the whole staircase. We're all standing at the edge of a cliff wondering if the fall is going to kill us. Not knowing that when we take the leap, we are falling into the arms of grace. What is faith? Faith is what motivates us to take the first step. Faith is what inspires us to take the leap because maybe this time we'll fly. And I'm reminded of something else that Dr. King said. He said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Whatever you do, you have to keep moving moving forward, even if you need someone to carry you. In 2014, a high school senior named Melanie Bailey was competing in a cross-country conference championship race in North Dakota. She was a half mile from the finish line when she came across a competitor, Danielle Lenoux, limping and crying. They would later learn that Lanou had torn her patella tendon and meniscus. Dozens of other runners passed her by, but Bailey offered to let Lanou lean on her shoulder and continue the race. They took a few halting steps before they realized that Lanou couldn't even do that. So Bailey lifted her opponent on her back and carried Lanou a half mile finish line. She finished 178 out of 180 runners. But they crossed together. Beloved, we do not just stand on the shoulder of giants. We are carried on the shoulders of a great cloud of witnesses. What is faith? Faith is what keeps us moving forward. Whether we are running or walking, crawling or being carried, our faith, the faith of our siblings in Christ and the faith of all those who have gone before us drives us ever on toward the vision of God's kingdom come. It shields us and spurs us on, but in all things, whatever it takes, it keeps us moving forward. <clears throat> Take up the shield of faith, beloved. And let us move forward together into the future God has promised for us, for our community, for the world. Amen. Amen. Beloved, let us join our hearts and voices in our song of the evening, Draw Me Close.
to feel the warmth of your grace. Help me find the way, bring me back to you. Let us pray together. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the opportunity to gather together in this place. Be present with you and with one another. Lord, as we come here pondering what is faith, let that question draw us closer to you. Let our faith in you, the faith that we share, draw us ever closer to the vision of the future you have promised us. In faith, we lift our prayers to you, trusting that you hear us and that you answer prayer. Hear now, O oh Lord, the prayers of your people spoken aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Mark, Nora, Pat. people of Ukraine, the people of Russia, and all who suffer the effects of war. Holy God, you know the prayers of our hearts before they are even on our lips. Accept the prayers that we offer Draw near to us in our time of need and hold our blessings and burdens close to your heart. We lift all of these things to you in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As you go out from this place, beloved, may you remember these things. That Christ has gone before you to prepare your way. That Christ walks beside you as friend and companion on a long and sometimes difficult journey. That Christ comes behind you to complete all those things that you must leave undone. And there will be many. That Christ is beneath you to lift you when you stumble. That Christ is within you to strengthen and sustain you. And that Christ is above you, watching over your going out and your coming in now and forevermore. Amen.
Beloved, let us join our hearts and voices in our sending song, The Blessing. I invite you to rise as you're able. place, beloved, may you share that peace with everyone you meet in every way that you can. Go in peace, beloved. Serve the Lord. Thank you. Uh, we will. We will. <laughs>